Hello there, Ray here, and today I will be going over all the different trades that the Wandering Traders offer, as well as the amounts they charge for each of them. Then I'll go into some detail about the Wanderers, as well as some things that I think they can improve upon them. As I said the Wandering Trader could be found naturally throughout the world of Minecraft. These guys are still not fully developed, as the Mojang staff are asking people for their opinions on these guys, and how to implement them into the game, and what type of trades they should have, and for what prices. Now the Wandering Trader has six different trades and he'll sell a total of 24 unique item categories that range from price of from one emerald all the way up to six emeralds. Now Wandering Traders are nothing like villagers. They don't open doors, they don't count towards villages. They can't have like babies. If you would click on one, you can't like produce another baby underneath there. It can't be used to like breed them up or anything. And you can't like convert them over into zombie villagers. And when you do kill them, they don't have any uh, XPs or drops that they give. Now they will be attacked by any type of mob that normally attacks uh, villagers, so like zombies, or vindicators, or pillagers, they will all attack these uh, wandering traders. Now if we look at the information that this guy supplies, you can see all his trades are in here. He has a total health of 20, which is similar to all the other villagers. You also can see the max uses is 7. So for each of these trades, you're only allowed to trade 7 of these items before he locks up. And then he doesn't trade anymore. A lot of people are saying that this is unfair as you should be able to get like more sand out of these guys. But for some trades it makes sense. Constantly using this guy to get OP items could kind of ruin the game. But I don't feel like all the trades should lock up at 7 as they are quite a variation of different stuff that he sells. Uh, people have also made the case that since he is a wandering trader, once you have bought out all of his stock, you really shouldn't be able to keep resupplying his stock since you bought it all out. So if they do choose to have him completely lock up and not sell any more things, I think they should make it so that the watering trader is more common, like maybe he comes into your world every half hour or something. Now even though it says the max uses is only 7, sometimes you will end up with less than 7 in a lockup. So let's go by 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see only about 4 and locked up. So 7 is just a maximum, You're not necessarily going to get that high all the time. Now these guys also have a unique tag right here. It says despawn delay. And this is how long before they will despawn. So I summon in a guy with some delay and you can see that right here where it says despawn delay, I gave him a bunch of game ticks. And as time goes by, it eventually goes down. And when it goes down to zero, he will despawn. It kind of makes sense that a watering trader would come in and then eventually leave the area. And as they can't like just walk away because once you go into unloaded chunks they would just stop, it makes sense that they would completely be removed from the game. So if they keep this aspect, it means that once you see these guys, you will have a short amount of time to trade with them and get all your stuff. You can't just capture this guy and put him in a little pen and then always have him there to trade stuff because he'll despawn as well as his items will lock up. So you're limited on resources as well as time you can use these guys. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Do you think some trades uh, should allow you to have infinite amounts of those type of items and some be locked up? Or do you think they should be one or the other? So I traded a whole bunch of different wandering traders. And I recorded all the different types of trades that they have as well as the amount of emeralds it costs as well as the number of items they supply. I made a spreadsheet showing each of the items that they sell as well as the amounts. And I'll link this down in the description if you want to look at this more closely. I want to go over each of these items and kind of explain what this means. And maybe also suggest some items that they should add into this list. So all the items they sell could be found by yourself in the world if you don't want to pay these prices. A lot of these items are specific to a certain biome. In some cases it's just easier if you find this guy to go ahead and trade him and get these items. Rather than going out and trying to fight him yourself. So the first item they sell is a pumpkin, and these can easily be found in Minecraft, so you probably don't want to go ahead and buy them. It comes with something like Skyblock. You can really limit the amount of stuff that you start with. You don't even have to start with like a pumpkin, because you'll eventually get one from one of these guys if you set up your world correctly. And you can also use a pumpkin to make pumpkin seeds, which you can start your own pumpkin patch with. The next one is seeds, and this is pumpkin seeds, melon seeds, wheat seeds, as well as beef. So the pumpkin and melon seeds that you can start your own patch with. You could get wheat seeds just from bone milling uh, grass blocks, and then you can get seeds that to use to grow up wheat. And beet seeds you can find like in chests as well as villages. Now the next one is dyes. They sell all the different color of dyes and they'll sell them at three at a time. They'll sell this for one emerald, which seems really expensive. It's not like a tall flower farm where you could use that flower to bone mill it to get more flowers. Once you get these dyes, once you use them up, you're not gonna have any more. So I know some people's goals like in Skyblock are to collect every single type of dye, in which case this would be some way to get some of the types of dyes. But it would also take away from that challenge itself as you got it from this guy rather than getting it from the environment around you. 
So I don't think the die one is quite up to standards. You should probably offer more die per one emerald. The next one is gunpowder. And this you can pretty much get anywhere in the world just by having creepers spawn in and killing them. Or like in the nether you could have a gas spawn and kill the gas for the gunpowder. It sells one gunpowder for one emerald. It seems as easy as it is to get. It should probably give you more gunpowder for one emerald. Next one is sugarcane and that one can be found pretty common inside of Minecraft as well. It's usually around some river base. But, but that one it actually grows. So it makes sense if it just sells you one. Even if you pay one emerald for it you can take that and just keep using it to grow more. Next one is red and brown mushrooms. They also sell for one coin. And that's another one that you can easily take and then put it into an environment where mushrooms will grow. So it keeps the light level low. And you can just grow more brown as well as red mushrooms. Next one is all the different types of flowers. These are only the short flowers. These are not the too high flowers. And there's also no wither flower being sold by these. And you might want to go ahead and pay one emerald just if you're needing one to decorate your house. Otherwise, it's probably better to just get some bone mill and then find the right biome, such as like a flower forest will give you the majority of different types of flowers. And then you can just bone mill that location and then get all the different types of flowers that you need. So the next one is sand. They'll sell normal sand in a bunch of eight all at once just for one emerald. So this could be a way to get sand in your world and then you can even convert that sand into glass if you wanted to. A lot of people were looking for a long-term way to get sand and I don't think this is it as you're going to keep spending emeralds to get sand. And sand is one of those things that has so many uses, being there are so many different types of glass colors as well as glass panes. It doesn't seem right that the only renewable resource way to get sand is through villagers. Now sand is pretty easy to find all over Minecraft if you just need some of it. And that's sort of what the guy is offering. He's just offering you some sand. He's not going to offer you like a long term situation to get more sand. The next one is the fern. And this is one of those guys that you can go ahead and you can plant and then you can bone mill it to get a tall fern. And then you can go ahead and harvest that with the shears. And then you can get some more ferns back. Essentially it's similar to other types of farm where you can keep getting more and more of them. So you may go ahead and pay one rather than going out in the world trying to find a taiga to give you a fern. The vine is a similar block that you can go out and find in your world. You can find like in jungles as well as in swamps. But it also grows. So you may go ahead and just pay one emerald, give yourself one vine and make like a vine farm. Next one's a glowstone, and this costs two emeralds, which is kind of expensive. It's most likely this is not a long-term situation, as it's going to cost you quite a few emeralds. But in short supply, you may need a glowstone, or you can take that glowstone, break it down to glowstone dust, and use that for like a potion. Lily pads also cost two emeralds, and those can be found through just like swampland, as well as like AFK fishing. So you'd rather make an AFK fish farm than buy them from this guy. Now, the sea pickle can be farmed up, so you can just get one sea pickle, as well as he also sells coral blocks, which sea pickles need to be grown on. And then you can bone mill them to get more of them, so it might be worth that. As well as the coral blocks, it's pretty cool that they have coral blocks being sold. They are now a renewable resource for Java. So whenever you need different types, they sell all the different variations here at these wandering villagers. So if you really didn't want to tear up your natural coral reefs, you can go ahead and buy them from him. But if you can use too many of them, you're definitely going to pay a heavy price for those. Next is cactus, and that's another one that can easily be farmed. So you might go ahead and pay three emeralds just to get a cactus. It's pretty cool that they have podzel here. Now you can farm up podzel just by making a giant spruce tree. It'll produce podzel around the bottom of it. This is a nice way to grab some podzel. It doesn't spread like mycelium, so you can't get more of it from buying this one. But it's also a source of dirt, as podzel is a form of dirt. So in case you need more dirt, such as like in a sky block, you can always go ahead and use this podzel and turn it into dirt so you get more dirt. Now packed ice is also sold for three emeralds. And this one isn't too hard because you can always go ahead and make a farm of ice and then craft into packed ice or even crafting into like blue ice. But packed ice isn't a water source, so it may not make much sense to buy this even in like a sky block uh, situation. Kelp is also sold, which is nice because you can always grab one and then farm it up more. So next one up is a slime ball, just a single one. And this is kind of different because normally the only way you get slime balls is from killing slimes. It doesn't cost you four emeralds, but let's say you just need a few slime balls to make some leaves or something like that. Then it definitely makes sense to grab some from here. Or if you just need enough to make like a small flying engine. But it's cool that there's an alternative source to getting slime balls. Now they also sell red variation of the sand. They sell them in groups of four. It does cost you four emeralds, so you're pretty much paying one emerald per sand, which is pretty expensive. And it's not like if you have one sand, you can get more red sand. So maybe if you just need some for decoration, and there isn't really anything that needs red sand over like white sand. So there's really no reason to buy red sand from this guy. Now, oddly enough, they also sell buckets of puffer fish as well as tropical fish, which kind of means that you're going to get a mob out of a villager. 
But it's also pretty cool as the buckets of pufferfish is like a cool way to make a mob that's going to damage something. And the tropical fish, as we tested in the snapshot review, when using those buckets of tropical fish, it allows you to get any variation of them when placing them on the ground. So you can get that some like 2,800 variations of tropical fish just from the wandering villagers, which means you're getting a lot of unique items just from one guy if they do make the villagers sell unlimited of that type. They also sell all the different types of saplings for five emeralds each. That's a pretty good deal since you can take those saplings and grow them up and get more saplings. So I definitely see people using this in uh, normal Minecraft as well as Skyblock. They also sell Nautilus shells, which is pretty insane since those are kind of hard to get and pretty rare. And all the shells are used to make the conduits, which is a pretty useful item, so it's kind of cool that they sell those. Now, the most expensive thing that the wandering traders sell is blue ice. They sell it for six emeralds. There's probably no reason to get blue ice from these guys, since you can always, like, say, make an ice farm and then go ahead and craft that up. Just notice over here we got one of the um, wandering traders. He's actually holding leads, and he's actually having these different uh, llamas. Um, on leads and he's just sitting here a couple llamas here and let's check out this guy Oh, this seems to be actually a naturally spawned in one so he just spawned in right here and he spawned in with these two llamas and the llamas are not tamed and let's see what he offers for trades very similar to what we've seen with other guys he does have a despawn delay this is his right here so he probably started out at 48,000 game ticks which is equivalent to 40 minutes and it seems this guy just will spawn near you if you stay in the area for so long. And I just happened to be in a village and I noticed all these other llamas were trying to be attracted and trying to make like a llama uh, caravan with these guys over here that were on the lead. Let's go ahead and push him and let's watch this guy uh, pull his llamas along. It's kind of funny. Let's see if I hit this guy. I guess his llamas won't. Oh, 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 his llamas do try to protect him. <laughs> Holy moly. Ouch. I'm just trying to make him run. <laughs> so let's also look at the information from these llamas that the uh, wandering trader has. These are the trader llamas. And I went ahead and you can see it here. And notice they also have the despawn delay. You also can see like other attributes like their health as well as their strength and their temper. And you can also see that they're leashed. And here it says where they're leashed to. So it says that they're leashed to this guy over here. Let's go ahead and tame one of them and let's see if we can stop them from despawning. So we got this guy tamed and let's go ahead and put a carpet on him. So let's go ahead and name tag these guys. We'll name tag this guy and we'll also name tag this guy, the wanderers. And we'll see if that prevents them from despawning. Now this should stop them from despawning as this is a persistence required of one. So you shouldn't despawn. But let's see if the delay actually overrides this. This guy also has persistence required one. Now, despite there being tons of wandering traders in this area, this guy was still able to spawn in here. So the wandering trader did despawn despite having a name tag. It seems like the llamas, they don't despawn no matter if they're named or not. So having that despawn delay timer that they have isn't actually doing anything. Now you can delay them from being able to despawn by uh, being in their trade interface. So I summoned in two wanderers right beside each other and the one that I Went ahead and traded in directly. I was able to prevent him from despawning, and essentially his time didn't even go downwards until I went out of his screen. So long as you're looking at his screen, it looks like they won't count that towards them despawning. Now, if you want to prevent these guys from despawning, you can always push them into like another portal, and then they'll be put into another dimension where they'll be in unloaded chunks, so they won't be able to despawn. And then you can always come there later and uh, trade with them. Now, developers are also wondering what other blocks these guys should sell, and these are some of my suggestions as well. I've seen some of you guys commented this in our last video. So I think they should sell some type of the prismarine blocks, or either the items to make these type of blocks. So they kind of come from oceans. They also can be used to make the conduit structures. So if they could get some of these pieces, then you could finish off your conduit structure. Now, sponges is a big one I've seen people say because they're non-renewable. So if you kill a bunch of guardians, you're eventually going to run out of guardians to kill. So it would be nice if they would, every once in a while, sell you a sponge. Even if it's kind of a, for a high price. At least that way you can get more sponges. Clay is the next one. Clay can be found throughout the world. There's also a non-renewable resource, meaning that you can't get more of it. So it would be kind of cool if they could sell that. And it's pretty useful as you can make it into a hardened clay as well as glazed terracotta. And the next one here is another quartz ore, or either the quartz item. 
That way people like on Skyblock could get this and potentially be able to make comparators. Um, one of the ProTech members, Acheron, he has a really extensive technical Skyblock Let's Play and he came across a problem where he had to design everything without quartz because there's no quartz on Skyblock and he did some pretty technical stuff with very few items to start with, which is pretty cool. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down in the description. But I think quartz would be kind of a cool thing. Every once in a while you could get a couple quartz, that way you can make at least a couple comparators. Next one is Mycelium. A lot of people ask for this one because it's similar to like Podzol. Um, mycelium does spread, so it could be another way to get Mycelium rather than going to a mushroom island. Then next up is Cobwebs. It's another non-renewable resource that's in Minecraft. You only find it typically in mine shafts and like strongholds. And it would be cool to have a villager that would sell you some of this stuff. Next is the Chorus Plant. Now the Chorus Plant, like I have it here in my hand, cannot be obtained in survival. I don't know why. They should definitely make it so you can silk touch these stalks and get these plants. I think it'd be cool if he'd sell something uh, kind of weird and unique such as this. I gotta say, the Watering Villagers is going to be a pretty exciting feature to have in 1.14 Survival. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. you guys know of any other items that you think the Wanderers should sell? As well as what prices you think they should be sold at? And as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And if you found this video interesting, go ahead and hit that like button and share this video with someone you know. And to see more snapshot review videos like this that go into detail, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And tell me your opinions on this in the comments. Bye-bye!